adequate notice of this meeting was provided and published in the Asbury Park Press and the Ocean Star on December 9, 2022. Copies of the agenda were provided to the newspaper posted on public bulletin boards and the township website. Please stand for a salute to the flag and remain standing for a moment of silence. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Councilman Albanese. Here. Councilwoman Pontarero. Here. Councilman Ambrosino. Here. Councilwoman Crate. Here. Councilman Minichino. Here. Councilwoman Zapsik. Here. Councilwoman DeYoung. Here. Thank you. At this time, I will call for nominations for the 2023 Council President. Uh, I, I move to nominate Heather DeYoung for the position of Council President, and I'd like to say a few words. Heather has faithfully served on Bricktown's Council since 2014, and during this time, she has accrued immense experience that her fellow Council members rely upon. During her service to our community, she has served as the chair of the Business and Finance Committee, and through her longtime partnership with the Chamber of Commerce, she's led impactful projects that have made a real difference here in Brick. Programs like the Buy in Brick program that have successfully helped both local businesses and our taxpayers. Additionally, Heather has served as liaison to the Housing Authority and the Tourist Development Commission, as well as performing long-term work with our wonderful senior community through a role on the Mayor's Senior Advisory Committee. And finally, with the substantial experience that she brings in the field of grant writing, she's a crucial ingredient in this team's strategic approach to smart fiscal management and tightly controlling the tax burden while running an efficient and effective municipal government. She is highly intelligent, accountable, ethical, and moral, and a person of both good character and good judgment. It's for these reasons, and many others, that the voters in Brick have elected Heather for a third term, and it's for these very same reasons that I believe she is the best choice for council president. Thank you. Do we have a second? Yeah, I'd like to second it for all those same reasons. <laughs> Are there any other nominations? Seeing none, may I have a motion to close nominations? Motion. Second. I'll take the role for, for uh, Councilwoman Heather D. Young as council president. Councilman Albanese. Yes. Councilwoman Pontarero. Yes. Councilman Ambrosino. Yes. Councilwoman Crate. Yes. Councilman Minichino. Yes. Councilwoman Zapsik. Yes. Councilwoman D. Young. Yes. Thank you. At this time, Mayor Ducey will swear in the new council president, D. Young. Oh, okay, talk loud. 
Uh, I would now like to call for nominations for council vice president for the 2023 term. Yes, I would like to nominate Andrea Zapsik. And I have a couple things I'd like to say as well. It's been my pleasure to work with Councilwoman Zapsik since 2015 when I was first elected here onto council. She has always been a guiding force for me. Her knowledge about this town and um, her love of this town has always been an inspiration to me. She is so kind and she just embodies everything that I believe uh, the council really holds true for this town and what we want for the Township of Brick. So I'm honored to nominate her and I hope she accepts, accepts the nomination and I believe she'd be a wonderful vice president. Thank you. Any seconds on the nomination? Yes, me for the same reasons. <laughs> Very good. Um, at this time, I'd like anybody else would like to nominate anybody? At this time, I'd like to close nominations. Do I have a first and a second? Motion. Very good. Can I please have a roll call? Councilman Albanese? Yes. Councilwoman Ponterero? Yes. Councilman Ambrosino? Yes. Councilwoman Crate? Yes. Councilman Minichino? Yes. Councilwoman Zapsik? Yes. President DeYoung? Yes. Very good. Now I'd like to invite Councilwoman, Council Vice President Zapsik down to be sworn in by Mayor Ducey. Very good. At this time, I'd like to invite uh, Councilman Minichino over to present him with the 2022 Council President plaque. This past year, Councilman Minichino led this council and emphasized us as a team um, at, with forethought and passion and as someone who can be counted on and kept a level head in all situations. He was always prepared, transparent, and answered any and all questions that we may have had. On behalf of this council, I would like to present you today, Councilman Minichino, with this Council President Pat. Thank you. I'd like to now invite Mayor Ducey up for a presentation to Arthur Halloran, former councilman. 
Arthur. <laughs> All right. Councilman Halloran, former Councilman Halloran, uh, was a great uh, councilman here in Brick Township. So the Brick Township residents definitely meet, uh, miss you very much. Uh, and we're happy that you can make it back for the holidays so that we can do this presentation. Uh, as many people may remember, Art uh, resigned early, uh, a couple months ago, back in 2022. Um, and we didn't get a chance to uh, honor him at that time. <laughs> and Art was instrumental in uh, helping people even year, many years after with the Sandy recovery still uh, by being on that committee. Uh, land use was on the planning board uh, all before becoming a, uh, becoming a councilman. And then he's on the floodplain management uh, team and uh, just really is always common sense approach, businessman approach, uh, just a, the perfect councilman. And Brick Township definitely misses you. And Art was elected to the Brick Township Council in November 2015, and he took the oath of office on January 1st of 2016. Over the course of the next nearly seven years, Art served faithfully and diligently as a member of the Township Council and consistently demonstrated a strong commitment to the betterment of Brick Township. Prior to serving on the Council, Art served the citizens of Brick as a member of the Brick Township Planning Board, the Floodplain Management Committee, and the Hazard Mitigation Committee. Councilman Halloran, who had a distinguished professional career during which he served as president of the Sony Electronics Business Solution Company, stepped down from the Brick Township Council on September 30th, 2022 to fully retire. I, John G. Ducey, the mayor of the Township of Brick in the County of Ocean in the state of New Jersey, in appreciation of his exemplary service to the citizens of Brick Township as a member of the Township Council, do hereby proclaim tomorrow, Wednesday, January 4th, 2023, to be Art Halloran Day in the Township of Brick, and I call upon all citizens to join me in thanking Art for his service and invaluable contributions to our community and wishing him a long and happy retirement. And in addition, we have a key to the Township of Brick and the good news is, unlike Councilman Mumolo, where we had to change all the locks to make sure he didn't get himself back in, we trust Art enough that we didn't change any of the locks to save taxpayers money and his full trust. So, congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. The residents certainly and how honored I ha have been to serve the residents of Brick and how proud I am to uh, have served with Mayor Ducey, uh, Ms. Bergen and the council, all my friends on the council and, and, and everybody here. We're just, I, I miss you terribly. It was a tremendous experience for me and thank you all for being my friend. Thank you, everyone. One last thing. Oh. Presented to Councilman Arthur Haller in appreciation for your, for your years of service and dedication while serving the citizens of Brick Township as a member of the Township Council. Councilman, January 1st, 2016 to September 30th, 2022. Council President, 2017. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Ducey, if you want to stay up there for your opening remarks. <laughs> Hello, and welcome to our 2023 reorganization meeting. Today marks the 10th year that I have been mayor of this great town, and I'd like to take a look back over the last 10 years. Normally, I do like a look ahead uh, to, to the year that's coming and name it the year of hope or the year of unity or community or family or whatever the case may be. Um, since it's been a decade at this point, I'm going to take a look back instead. Um, First, I want to thank Debbie Murphy, who's not here with us tonight. <laughs> She's been my assistant for all these years and uh, keeps my calendar together, keeps my schedule together, and uh, makes sure the mayor's office um, is running smoothly. So thank you, Debbie. Um, everybody looking back to the 10 years ago, the craziness when I first became mayor, um, the recovery of Sandy was still going on. Uh, we didn't have any inspectors in our building department, if anybody remembers that. And we no longer had 
um, what was then called the gang task force because of lack of um, staff over in the police department. All those things were missing. Um, and it was important to try to put all those back in place. Uh, making sure, obviously, we have a full building department. We didn't have to rely on Tom's River, um, who decided because of Sandy they weren't going to send our inspectors. If everybody remembers, we had a contract with the state um, to have inspectors come in. You know, and it was just a crazy time trying to get everything done with the amount of work that was being done. We also had many parks that were in disrepair. And I'm grateful to have overseen the renovations of Windward Beach, Herbertsville Park, Lake Riviera Park, Angela Hibbert Park, Hank Waltonowski Park, Bernie Cook Park, the Forge Pond Tennis Courts, Bay Harbor Beach Park, Bayside Park, the Drum Point Turf Field, and then the ones that are coming up this year, soon to be the new Scooter and BMX Park at the Drum Point Sports Complex, as well as the renovation of Cedar Bridge Manor Park, and then after that in 2024, hopefully, as long as we get through the state and federal government, Mallard Point Park. Um, we had to deal with the heroin epidemic had reached its heights in 2016 and 2017, and the expansion of our police department under Chief Riccio has helped uh, bring those rates down. Uh, the chief was a great proponent of community policing, uh, which has really made our police force the top force in the entire United States. The three-pronged approach that Chief Riccio really got going for us here in Brick Township of education, enforcement, and rehabilitation has helped our community greatly and made Brick a desirable place to live and to raise your family. Um, also back in 2017, we saw a big, uh, a lot of big box stores going out of business. So we lost Pathmark, A&P, Sports Authority, um, and then at that point we had to do a new emphasis on uh, filling those stores, those big stores, as well as the numerous strip malls that we have around town. It ended up being a success story as we were the first town in New Jersey to implement the empty storefronts program, um, and to date, the empty storefronts program has filled over nine football fields worth of empty storefronts in town. Uh, that's a program where we waive permit fees um, for spaces that are less than 5,000 square feet that have been empty for more than a year. Um, and just this year, still, so it's still ongoing, uh, we welcomed innovative mom and pop stores. That, that include, uh, when I say this year, I mean 2022, of course. Um, we welcomed uh, Mr. Cupcake, Slime University, and Golf Kings. And then looking forward in 2023, we have other small businesses opening towns such as Crumble Cookie. Um, we've also attracted big stores such as Trader Joe's, Royal Farms, Wawa's, uh, Lidl. The only people happy with the Wawa's are the ones that don't have them near them within five minutes, and then they're always happy. Lidl, a new Aldi. Uh, and within the next two years, uh, we're going to have a Lavodi's Market in March of 2024. Uh, as well as an Ashley Furniture Store um, to put on that list of big stores that are actually filled. Uh, another thing we had to face was transparency in government, uh, something we have increased and expanded over the past 10 years, from Facebook Lives to weekly emailed newsletters, and then we have the mailed newsletters. Uh, our seniors had asked for something in print that they can still read uh, and have like a newspaper type, so we do that at least once a year, sometimes twice a year. Um, and we just let the public know what's happening in our town and the ability to ask me questions live directly leads to an open and honest relationship here in Brick Township between government and residents that you're not going to be seeing, uh, not, you don't see that repeated anywhere else in the state. I've had four different mayors come down and watch a Facebook Live and they all left saying I'm never doing that. Um, thanks for having me here. Uh, I don't know how you do that, which is fine with me. I don't know why you wouldn't do it. It seems like it's an awesome opportunity to keep in contact with residents. Um, we also had to overcome COVID and those crazy times um, when it was much more scarier and unknown of what was going to happen with it you know, back then. Uh, we had financial problems at, at, you know, obviously in town with, um, with uh, revenues and stuff. We, our township employees came together, 60 different employees accepted furloughs to help their co-employees and help the town uh, get through all that financially, uh, which is a big, uh, big sacrifice on their part. Um, many department heads, myself, council members also got sacrificed to help the towns financially during that crazy 2021, 2020 year. Um, everyone had to adapt to that temporary normal where everybody said it was a new normal. I'm like, oh gosh, I hope not. Luckily, it was only a temporary normal with uh, all the outdoor activities, on, you know, all the online activities. You know, we had our, we, we were doing craft, craft things online and we we're doing, uh, yeah, even the seniors were doing their chair, chair yoga and things like that online. Uh, our buses turned into food delivery trucks. Our restaurants were allowed to be open outside. They didn't need uh, approval of the boards or anything. 
Uh, and in our gyms, same thing. They were able to work out. People were able to work out in the parking lots, or if they didn't have a parking lot, they were able to work out at our Havens Farm that we opened up the gym so that they could still make, you know, try to make as much money as they could to stay in business and keep food on their family's table. Um, we also got over 900 people vaccinated here in Brick, uh, thanks to the help of Walmart and OHI uh, and the Brick um, PAL for allowing us to use their building. Uh, all awesome stuff. I mean, if everybody remembers trying to get a vaccine, like now you look back on it, and I know vaccines are contra con controversial anyway, but looking back on it, everybody was like, how do I get a vaccine? I can't get an appointment. I can't get an appointment. And we got 900 people here uh, in Brick vaccinated, which is awesome. Right here in this room, uh, or on Zoom, if it was 2020 or 2021, uh, the last 10 years of ordinances and resolutions have been passed just to make a Brick a better place for everyone. It's all quality of life stuff. Uh, programs have been talked about in past here. Programs such as the Farmer's Market, uh, adding a fourth Summerfest show. Uh, the Brick Municipal Anti-Drug Committee, known as BMAC, was brought back. Uh, the Mayor's Student Advisory Program started. The Abandoned Properties Registration started. Property Maintenance Board was created. Uh, rehabbing the DAV building was done by our in-house staff. Uh, the Responsible Lands Landlords Ordinance for Animal Houses uh, was passed. Fall Fest was started. Although I kind of still like Bricktoberfest myself, but that's just me. It was, it was a flop as Bricktoberfest, but very successful as Fallfest. Um, senior buses uh, started and the Teen Center. Uh, those, there's many, many more, but I just wanted to touch on some of those over the past 10 years. Uh, just this past year, the funding and approval of the new EMS building on Aurora Place to help with response times and make better working conditions for our EMS staff and, fu um, and funding and approval for the coming of this year, the new senior center, right in the middle of town for all of our seniors to enjoy, and a building we can call Brick Townships, um, as opposed to renting somewhere. Uh, also, right here in this room, the approval of the purchase of 20 Brower Lane was a great step in trying to keep as much greenery as we can here in Brick Township. It was the first property that was ever recommended by what was started last year, the Brick, and o Brick Open Space Savers Group. Uh, and it's awesome. The very first property that they wanted to acquire, we were able to successfully save and keep as open space. The Ocean County Natural Lands Trust funded it. Um, and uh, we're going to continue to try to do as many more. We sent out another four letters. Uh, haven't heard back on those four. And we're also going to continue in our attempts to acquire the Bretton Woods property from DR Horton. And hopefully we will be successful in that purchase as well to stop those houses uh, from being built. Uh, also, another big step in 2022 was the passing of the pilot agreement for the future sports dome site. That vote to pass the pilot agreement gave us not only the $280,000 a year in payments, but more importantly, assured us, our kids and our grandkids, that a cool super sports dome will be built on that site rather than condominiums. Uh, thank you to each one of the council people for approving that pilot agreement so we can have something to be proud of and to be healthy in instead of a bunch of condos more traffic with an impact on our schools with new kids and impact on our quality life of all the traffic. Uh, the sports dome should be here in the last quarter of 2023, according to the owners. So I can't wait for that to occur. Another big service being introduced in 2023 is with the help of a grant from the federal government, we will be starting a dialysis bus for seniors at some point in 2023, whenever the grant comes in and we're able to purchase a bus. Hopefully the purchase doesn't get delayed, like everything else in the world is delayed and on back order. Uh, that is a service that we found out was needed when we started the senior bus program. Uh, we were getting a lot of calls at the beginning for transportation to dialysis appointments. Uh, we realized we don't have the proper staff on board uh, a bus uh, for any problems that may arise. Uh, but more importantly, it's very time consuming. Um, but we saw that there was a definite need and Zuma over at Senior Services suggested that we uh, try to maybe do something on that. And thanks to all the hard work of Joanne Bergen and, and Tara and everybody, we uh, were able to, um, to, to get the uh, grant done. So thank you, Joanne. Um, the biggest highlight over the past 10 years, um, as everybody knows, I'm, fiscally guy, I'm a fiscal guy, has been making and keeping brick affordable for everyone. Uh, everyone knows that we had the first tax decrease in Brick Township in at least 35 years. But it's not only that accomplishment, but the continuous ability to keep taxes stable year after year. Since 2014, the municipal taxes have only gone up an average of $47.11 a year for an average assessed home, which is currently stands at $299,900. That is remarkable in these times. Less than $4 a month 
we're talking about for this ten for this nine year period for the average assessed home um, that's a lot of hard work by a lot of different people a lot of department heads Joanne Maureen Laffey Berg um, and uh, all the employees I mean everybody everybody just cuts back does more with less and to be able to keep four dollars a month over a nine-year period is, is astonishing thank you to our council for passing the budgets the 2023 budget will be coming in a few months so with all the rising costs in the world we will work hard on behalf of our residents again in addition debt debt reduction has been a goal of mine the promise was to reduce debt 1.5 million a year and we have done an average of four million ninety five uh, nine sorry four million ninety five thousand and the total debt reduction, instead of just being 1.5 times 9, which is 13.5, uh, uh, the debt reduction is 36,862,649. Our debt is 21% less today than it was on this day in 2014. Uh, for both of these budgets, the capital and the operating, uh, thank you to the hard work of our business administrator, Joanne Bergen, our CFO, Maureen Laffey Berg, our, all of our department heads, and like I said, frankly, all of our employees for helping us out, uh, saving money. Over my 10 years, I've had some great council people to work with. In the beginning, there was Bob Moore, who always wore his heart on his sleeve, as he, put, as he always put it, and he sure did. He always helped somebody whenever they need it and whatever cause they need it, and he was a valuable firefighter and still is, a valuable volunteer firefighter. Uh, there was Jim Fosman who was there, who I first ran with when I was first elected to council back in 2011, and Jim was again successful uh, in 2015 as well. Uh, there was Susan Lidecker, who hopefully for the good of Brick Township will get more involved again, as she was invaluable to our initiatives, such as the farmer's market, fall fest, and also a strong proponent of stabilizing taxes and reducing spending, which are stalwarts of what I believe in, as I said before. Um, next was Andrea Zapsik, who, uh, oop, she moved, <laughs> she used to be over there, <laughs> who actually, she was there for how many years, <laughs> eight, 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 uh, 12. Uh, next was Andrea Zapsik, who actually took my place on the council and added such a vast amount of knowledge about recreation and even more importantly, drug addiction and recovery. She was vital in the renovations of our parks and also in our ideas and programs through BMAC, such as Sports Saturday, the Athletes and Painkillers program that I don't remember the name of, but it was, you know, it was, it was great telling you know, high school athletes when you get hurt not to get hooked on opioids and more importantly notifying their parents of, of the risk. Um, and also an advocate for our community policing program and uh, all the education uh, that components that go on there. Uh, next up is Paul Mumolo, who decided not to run last year after eight years on council and has been missed for sure. Uh, he always added levity to, to a sometimes grinding process, but also knew when to be serious and was one of the guardians of the budget, questioning even minor purchases, such as uh, how many basketballs are in that order and how many golf balls and things like that. Uh, next is Mariana Pantorero, <laughs> she used to be over here, <laughs> uh, who is Wonder Woman. Uh, her empathy is unmatched. Uh, Mariana has dealt with so much in her life, but is always there to lend a hand to whoever needs it. She also has been very supportive of expanding the police department and making brick safer for everyone to enjoy. Uh, Heather DeYoung, who I know is right behind me, <laughs> is a great advocate for seniors here in Brick. Heather is pre present at pretty much every senior event in town, from our monthly senior advisory meetings to bingos and the different holiday events at senior services. I think she actually beat me in attendance this year in, in 2022, uh, which, is, which is quite an accomplishment. Um, she's also been a big proponent of the senior busing program and obviously supports fully the new senior center and she's also always working with um, uh, businesses including uh, going to monthly meetings with the uh, Chamber of Commerce. Uh, Art Her Halloran who we heard about earlier a terrific councilman who also will be missed by not only me but all the residents of Brick as they may not realize how valuable he was in providing common sense solutions to many problems that existed over the years level-headed and always thinking of taxpayers first. He was instrumental in helping with land use issues as well as Sandy recovery uh, through the planning board and uh, his work with the flood mitigation. Uh, Lisa Crate is an asset to the residents of Brick. Her ideas help make Brick a great place for all to live. She works hard to make our community events special while at the same time working to keep Brick affordable. Lisa has been instrumental in expanding our programs while keeping the cost down. Her hard work on council has definitely made Brick a better place for all. Lisa has the strength and leadership to continue all the goals of the Ducey team. 
Uh, Vince Minichino is a common sense, no bones about it leader. Uh, he definitely studies each and every township issue and then comes up with a common sense solution on how to handle it. Brick Township is lucky to have Vince in their corner fighting for them. Next is Perry Albany's. With just one year together, it is easy to see why Perry is so liked around town. He puts his heart into everything, very similar to Bob Moore. He's a great, a great example of this is his involvement through his job at the county with all of the dogs that were being abused by those awful people. Perry's there walking those dogs and uh, petting those dogs and making those dogs uh, feel, feel loved. Yep. He's willing to get involved and not only get involved and be a part of, but he actually is an active participant, which is a different thing, um, uh, in committees such as our TNR, which is our Trap Neuter Release, and our Sustainable Brick, uh, all for the good of the residents. Uh, and then finally, Derek, uh, who joined our council a few months ago. Uh, Derek Ambrosino is clearly a proponent for keeping brick affordable. He constantly looks for different ways to save money or to create more revenue for the town. He is the financial watchdog on the council, and we'll, we'll probably keep up all the, we'll, we'll keep up all the, uh, you know, good saving policies and spending policies that we have in town. Uh, last but not least, in the summary of the last 10 years, a lot of people told me that I had made some good decisions. Um, people don't agree with every single one. If you agreed with every single one, you'd be here wearing a suit with the microphone in front of you. <laughs> Uh, it's just the way it is. There's never 100% uh, approval of anything. But some of the good decisions that people have said I made was taking down the right, red light cameras, uh, fighting the gover governor on his COVID restrictions, uh, allowing the steel wall to be placed at the beach to protect our uh, oceanfront homes and uh, infrastructure. And I know for sure that those were good. But by far the best decision I made was inviting Joanne Bergen, our superstar business administrator, to be part of the Brick Township team. She has done so much for this town from what people may consider the lowest employee, like maybe like a seasonal camp counselor, high schooler kid, um, to the highest, the highest employees, including uh, the department heads, of which there's a number here tonight. Good to see you. Uh, she has been my confidant, my guidance, and most of all, my friend. Uh, we've had to make some easy decisions, like hiring Chief Riccio to be the third police chief ever in the Brick Township history. Very easy decision. Uh, and some difficult decisions over the years. A lot of them dealing with COVID. That was crazy, crazy time. Uh, or perhaps there's been some employee discipline uh, issues along the way that are not easy. If you, you have to have feelings to do the job and to do the job correctly. Uh, there's one person who has held Brick Township together this past 10 years, and you see her parking cars at Summerfest, or you're, you're going to hear her answering the informa information desk calls. So thank you, Joanne, as all the things spoken about earlier tonight and much more are due to your hard work and determination to make me and all of us look good. <laughs> So thank you for that. So as you can see, everybody, Brick has been going in the right direction for the past 10 years and will continue to do so as Brick continues to get better every single day and every single year. Hopefully, everyone has a safe, healthy, and wonderful 2023. Look forward to it. Thank you. Whenever you're ready, you're back up for your appointments. Back up. <laughs> She's <gonna sit> down. <laughs> All right, another group of people, or people, yeah, I guess plural, people's people, um, or uh, that our township has really run f fully, um, fully well on and, and been very successful. Uh, we've had a few hiccups from very few firms uh, over the 10 years. But uh, you're going to hear a bunch of names being read by the council people for engineering firms and uh, auditing, accounting, financial, attorney firms, uh, all just really keep Brick Township uh, running. Um, and here we have a list of mayor's appointments. These are, these are volunteer uh, committees, uh, with the, you know, the exception of some minor pay for a couple, couple of, the different, of the different boards. Um, but what we have is uh, this list is, again, people that just make Brick Township run smoothly. We had a few openings this year, uh, not many, because almost everybody wants to be reappointed. And what I do every single year is I ask um, the secretaries for each of the committees uh, and or the chairman, depending on what type of committee, if there's no secretary, um, is there any problems, like attendance, pro attendance problems, uh, you know, it's, that would be the main concern, um, you know, not showing up for meetings and stuff like that. And usually I get the answer back, no. And then I say, well, check with everybody if they want to be reappointed. And 98% of the time they say yes. 
Uh, so what that does is make it very hard to appoint anybody new. Uh, we ask for resumes and we get more resumes in than, uh, than spots open, unfortunately. Uh, so just uh, we have to go through them and pick out the best ones. You're going to hear these are the mayor's appointments. There's obviously going to be a bunch of council appointments. Uh, so first up is the Architectural Review Committee. Uh, Michael Webb, resident member, reappointed. Anthony Zarilli, resident member, reappointed. Alyssa Cummins, the township engineer. Tara Paxton, the municipal planner. I don't think you guys had choices, but you're reappointed. <laughs> Uh, Environmental Commission, Robert Raich, a member, reappointed. Ramian Lechien, member, reappointed, but moved up from alternate number one. Sharon Urculiani, member, reappointed. Joseph Rampino, alternate number one, reappointed and moved up from alternate number two position. And one of our openings, uh, Ronald Dente, alternate two, uh, he's new. Historic Preservation Commission. Our township historian, how can you not reappoint? Jean Donatello as a class B member, reappointed. Um, Vienna Warrett, also a great member, been there for years, class C member. Um, Emily Waller uh, is an alternate one. Uh, she is being reappointed and moved up from an alternate two. Uh, and Craig Wall is our new member as well as an alternate two. And Vienna used to be, a, she was an alternate and moved up to a regular member. Uh, planning board. Matt Fagan, uh, class two, reappointed. Joanne Lambusta, class four, alternate one, and environmental repre representative, reappointment. Uh, property maintenance, uh, I see him here tonight. Stephen Brill, member, reappointed. Uh, Edward Buecher, member, reappointed. Ron Gaskill, member, reappointed. James W. Hogan, member, reappointed. Sandra Thomas, member, reappointed. Joanne Bergen, alternate, reappointed. Richard De Janeiro, alternate reappointed, and Dan Newman, construction code official, permanent. He doesn't have a choice. Um, Shade Tree, Dorothy Laposa, a member reappointed. One of the new people here, George Futternecht, a uh, member who is new. Uh, Sustainable Brick Township, Jamie Lee Sisko, she's the mayor's designee, reappointed. Uh, Perry Albanese, council representative, reappointed. John Hyphantis, PE chairman, reappointed. Steven Krakowski, who's here tonight, uh, DPW representative, reappointment. Again, I don't think you had a choice. <laughs> Victoria Pakawa, Board of Education representative, reappointed. Steve Specht, PE, MUA representative, reappointed. Keith Rella, municipal planner, designee, reappointed. Sharon Urkeliani, Environmental Commission rep, reappointed. Brian Mursky, Chamber of Commerce rep, reappointed. Paul Kurtz, member, reappointed. Travis Kirchman, member reappointed. John Henry, member reappointment. And Andrew Topinka, he's a member, new. Uh, TNR committee, Catherine Daly, mayor's representative, reappointed. John Talty, chair, reappointed. And Scott Smith, member reappointed. Uh, and Scott's one of our police officers, one of our Hilo officers, canine officer. Uh, BMAC, uh, there's a number of BMAC, and this is my last one. Uh, Councilwoman Andrea Zapsik, Chair. Uh, Councilwoman Lisa Crate is the Mayor's designee. Captain Dave Forrester. Earl Mosley. Joanne Arnold Velchek. Gary LaRosa. Christy Marietta. Brian Mursky. Rabbi Robert Rubin. Reverend Steve Phillip. Stephen Schaub. Angelo Savarino. Doreen Janes, Arlene Carroll, Ed Maroney, Johanna Palmieri, Dawn Olissi, Carol Steiter, Thea Strong, Michael Tuline Sr., Mark Brownholtz, Reverend Kist Christy Miles, Jimmy Barracia, and then we have two emeritus members, uh, neither could uh, no, no longer drive at night, so they're unable to go to meetings, but still wanted to be part. Uh, and that is Krista Grev and Marilyn Lago that we will uh, lean on for you know advice every now and then and reach out to them by way of phone since they can't make it um, you know in person. So if we need their advice on something, on how things worked in the past and all, we could always reach out to them uh, as emeritus members. So thank you very much. <laughs> very good. Thank you, Mayor. Madam Clerk, consent agenda. 
All matters listed under item consent agenda will be enacted by one motion in the form listed below. If discussion is desired on any item, this item will be removed from the consent agenda and will be considered separately. 14-1. Established council meeting dates 2023. Councilman Minichino. Thank you. This resolution establishes the council meeting dates for 2023. Thank you. 14 2. Establish, ba establish Bank Depositories Cash Management Plan 2023. Councilwoman Crete. Thank you. This resolution adopts a cash management plan and establishes bank depositories as part of that plan. The cash management plan is an annual requirement for all municipalities and is developed by the township's chief financial officer in accordance with local fiscal affairs law. Thank you. 14 3. Authorized 2023 temporary budget. Vice President Zapsik. Thank you, Council President. This resolution authorizes the adoption of a temporary budget, which must be done within the first 30 days of January, so that commitments and payments can be made prior to the adoption of the budget. Thank you. 14-4. Authorized payment of township's debt service. Mayor Ducey. Thank you. Got your stuff out of your Mary Poppins. <laughs> This resolution authorizes payment of the township's 2023 debt service uh, as part of my debt reduction plan, um, and it's reflected in this resolution. Uh, the township this year will be paying $16,590,845 in debt service in fiscal year 2023, um, and that will reduce the debt um, another four or so million dollars that we'll know for sure uh, by the time the end of the year comes, um, keeping us on track of uh, definitely way more than 1.5 million a year in debt reduction. Thank you. Thank you. 14-5. Designate agent for taxing district, Ocean County Board of Taxation. Councilman Albanese. Thank you, Council President. This resolution des designates the tax assessor or municipal authority as authorized to act as the agent for taxing district during the year 2023 and execute stipulations of settlement on any tax appeal or complaint filed by taxing district or taxpayer in the year 2023. 14-6. Authorized oh. petty cash funds. Councilman Ambrosino. Thank you, Council President. Uh, this resolution authorizes petty cash funds as needed in the Township Clerk Office, the Police Department, the Public Works, Engineering, and Parks Departments. 14-7. Award contract HVAC Brick Senior Center. This resolution awards a contract in the amount of $214,916.88 to Hannah's Mechanical Contractors in Milltown for the installation of heating, ventilating, and air conditioning system at the township's new senior center on Aurora Place. This contract is being awarded through the Educational Services Commission of New Jersey Cooperative Pricing System. 14-8. Authorized canine equipment exchange with Howell Township. Councilwoman Pontarero. Thank you, Madam President. This resolution authorizes an exchange with Howell Township Police Department, whereby Brick Township is going to receive a canine dog kennel from 2013 in exchange for a rear seat and door panel that would be obviously um, unnecessary where the crate is in the back. Thank you. 14-9. Authorized shared services agreement with County, Ocean County Narcotics Strike Force. Vice President Zapsik. Thank you, Council President. This resolution authorizes the execution of a shared services agreement with the Ocean County Prosecutor's Office for the Ocean County Narcotics Strike Force. The purpose of the strike force is to combat the growing gang element and enforce firearm and anti-drug laws of the state of New Jersey. The township receives a stipend per officer assigned to the task force who participates for 12 consecutive months. Thank you. 1410. Authorized grant application to county tourism promotional matching grant. Councilman Minichino. Thank you. This resolution authorizes a grant application in the amount of $9,825 to the Ocean County Tourism Advisory Council for the Township's Farmer's Market. Thank you. 1411. Authorize advice and consent for fair and open professional service contract with Township Attorney. 
Councilwoman Ponterero. Thank you. This resolution appoints Starkey, Kelly, Keneally, Cunningham, and Turnback as the 2023 Township Attorney. Thank you. 1412. Authorize advice and consent for fair and open professional service contract with municipal and conflict prosecutor. Councilwoman Crete. Thank you. This resolution authorizes the appointment of Desterbats, Campbell, Staub, and Schroff, Hamilton, specifically Anthony J. Desterbats, Raymond C. Staub, Adam Lips, and David P. Stroff as municipal prosecutor, and Cleary Jacoby, Alfieri Jacobs, Matawan, specifically Lonnie M. Lombardi as conflict prosecutor. Thank you. 1413. Authorize advice and consent for fair and open professional service contract with municipal, alternate, and conflict public defender. Councilman Ambrosino. Thank you, Council President. This resolution authorizes the contract for municipal public defender to the law office of Matthew R. Sage of Beechwood. This resolution author, um, also appoints Brian DiStefano of Bayville, Charles P. Tivenin of Brick, and the firm of Montenegro, Thompson, Montenegro, and Gens of Brick as alternate public defender. This resolution also appoints Brian J. DiStefano of Bayville, Charles P. Tivenin of Brick, Cleary, Giacobbe, Alfieri, and Jacobs of Matawan, Montenegro, Thompson, Montenegro, and Gens of Brick, and Sin, Cantoli, Bogan, and Stewerman of Point Pleasant Beach as conflict public defender. 1414. Authorize Mayor to enter into fair and open professional service contract for legal counsel for redevelopment issues. This resolution authorizes the contract for legal counsel for redevelopment issues to McManaman, Scotman, and Bauman of Roseland and Raynone Coughlin Minichello of Iceland. 1415. Authorize Mayor to enter into fair and open professional service contract for the Township Auditor. Councilman Albanese. Thank you, Council President. This resolution authorizes the execution of contract with Fallon and Company, Hazlitt, as Township Auditor. 1416. Authorize Mayor to enter into fair and open professional service contract for professional accountant services. Councilwoman Ponterero. Thank you. This resolution authorizes the execution of a contract with Bauman and Company of Voorhees for professional account services. 1417. Authorize Mayor to enter into professional, a fair and open professional service contract for legal services pool. Okay, bear with me. This is a long one. This resolution authorizes the approval of the following legal services pool. Apruzzi, McDermott, Maestro, and Murphy of Warren, Barker, Gelfand, James, and Sarvis of Linwood, Bathgate, Wegner, and Wolf of Lakewood, Brown and Connery of Westmont, Charles P. Tivenin of Brick, Sita, Holzapfel, and Zabarski of Toms River, Cleary, Giacobi, Alfieri, Jacobs of Matawan, DeFrancesco, Baseman, Koonsman, Davis, Lair, and Flom of Warren, Durkin and Durkin of West Caldwell, Gluck, Walworth of Freehold, Kelleher, Van Dyke, and Moriarty of Toms River, Kevin B. B. Reardon, Esquire of Toms River, LaCourt, Bundy, Verardi, and Kinsella of Union, Leitner, Tort, DeFazio, and Browse of Edison, Marmara Law, Law of Woodbury, Montenegro, Thompson, Montenegro, and Gens of Brick, Raynone, Coughlin, Mini and Minicello of Islin, Rothstein, Mandel, Strom, Halm, and Cipriani of Toms River, Sin, Cantoli, Bogan, and Stewerman of Point Pleasant Beach, Starkey, Kelly, Keneally, Cunningham, and Turnback of Toms River, the Wiener Law Group of Red Bank, these firms have met all the administrative requirements and have the qualifications and experience to provide the services to the township. This re resolution further approves the pool of attorneys as labor counsel, including Apruzzi, McDermott, Maestro, and Murphy of Warren, Armando V. Riccio of Medford, Barker, Gelfan, James, and Sarvis of Linwood, Brown and Connery of Westmont, Cleary, Giacobi, Alfieri, Jacobs of Mat Matawan, DeFrancesco, Bateman, Koontzman, Davis, Lair, and Flom of Warren, Durkin and Durkin of West Caldwell, and Raynone, Coughlin, Minichello of Iceland, Islin, sorry. These firms have met all the, of the administrative requirements and have the qualifications and experience to provide to this, this service to the township. 
This resolution also approves the pool for tax appeals council to include Cleary, Giacobbe, Alfieri, Jacobs of Matawan, DeFrancesco, Bateman, Koonsman, Davis, Lair, and Flom of Warren, Durkin and Durkin of West Caldwell, Inglesino, Webster, Wiscala, and Taylor of Parsippany, and Starkey, Kelly, Keneally, Cunningham, and Turnback of Toms River. There are ongoing tax appeals pending which have a myriad of interest, intricacies requiring diligence and consist, consistency. The selected firms are fully up to speed and continuing these matters will be handled expeditiously. This resolution also approves an, a recommend of award for the Tax Foreclosure Council to Goldberg, Mackler, Sai, Mintz, Pfeffer, Bonchi, and Gill of Northfield. 1418. Authorize Mayor to enter into fair and open professional service contract for engineering services pool. Vice President Zapsik. Thank you, Council President. This resolution authorizes a pool of professionals for engineering survey and surveying services, including ACT Engineers Incorporated, Robbinsville, ARH Associates Incorporated, Hamilton, Brightview Engineering, LLC, Livingston, Center State Engineering, Monroe Township, CME Associates, Howell, Colliers Engineering and Design, Red Bank, E2 Project Management, LLC, Rockaway, French Pirello Associates, Wall, H2M Associates Wall, Keystone Engineering Group Hamilton, <coughs> Matrix New World Engineering, Land Surveying and Landscape Architecture, Eatontown, Mid-Atlantic Engineering Partners, Mount Laurel, Onboard Engineering Corporation, East Windsor, Pannoni Associates, Haddon Heights, Prestige Environmental Incorporated, Somerset, Remington Vernick Engineers, Toms River, TM Associates, Toms River, and Van Cleef Engineering Associates, Hillsborough. This resolution also <coughs> approves the environmental engineer pool, including ACT Engineers, Robbinsville, CME Associates, Howell, E2 Project Management, Rockaway, French Pirello Associates, Wall, H2M Associates, Wall, Matrix New World Engineering, Land Surveying and Landscape Ar Architecture, Eatontown, Mid-Atlantic Engineering Partners, Mount Laurel, and Prestige Environmental Somerset. This resolution author also authorizes the dredging engineer pool, including ACT Engineers, Robbinsville, HM is CME Associates, Howell, E2 Project Management, Rockaway, Matrix New World Engineering, Land Surveying and Landscape Architecture, Eatontown, and Mid-Atlantic Engineering Partners, Mount Laurel. The resolution authori also authorizes the traffic engineering pool, including Brightview Engineering Livingston, CME Associates Howell, French and Perillo Associates Wall, and Matrix New World Engineering Land Surveying and Landscape Architecture in Eatontown. Thank you. Thank you. 1419. Authorize Mayor to enter into fair and open professional service contract and authorize rebid for architectural services pool. Councilwoman Crete. <laughs> Thank you. This resolution approves a pool of professionals on the architectural services pool, including Architect Design Group, Winter Park, Florida, H2M Architects and Engineers, Wall Township, Netta Architects, Mountainside, Parallel Architectural Group, Long Branch, Rodier Ebersberger Architects, Williamstown, Settenbrino Architects, LLC, Red Bank, the Design Collaborative Architects and Planners, Kate May Courthouse, <clears throat> Tokarski Milliman Architects Wall, and Yezi Architects Toms River. This resolution also authorizes advertising for the receipt of additional proposals. Thank you. 1420. Authorize Mayor to enter into fair and open professional service contract for Bond Council. Councilman Minichino. Thank you. This resolution authorizes a contract with Wilentz, Goldman, and Spitzer Woodbridge as Bond Council. 1421. Authorize Mayor to enter into fair and open professional service contract for financial advisor. Councilman Albanese. Uh, thank you. <clears throat> this resolution authorizes a contract with <clears throat> NW Financial Group, Hoboken, as a <clears throat> financial advisor. 1422. Authorize Mayor to enter into fair and open professional service contract for the property appraisal property inspection services. Councilman Minichino. Thank you. This resolution authorizes the execution of a contract with the following firms to provide property appraisals and inspection services to the township on an as-needed basis. Associated Appraisal Group, Cranford and Henry J. Mancini and Associates, Manahawkin. 1423. 
Authorize Mayor to enter into fair and open professional service contract for the property maintenance board attorney. Councilman Minichino. Thank you. This resolution authorizes the execution of a contract with Charles D. Bauer Brick as attorney for the property maintenance board. Thank you. 1424. Authorize Mayor to enter into fair and open professional service contract for hearing officer services pool. Councilwoman Pontarero. Thank you. This resolution authorizes the execution of a contract alongside. Execution of a contract with the following attorneys to serve as hearing officer. Parker, Gelfin, James and Sarvis of Linwood, Charles D. Bauer, Esquire of Breck, Kevin B. Reardon of Toms River, Rossi, Mandel, Strom, Hom, and Cipriani of Toms River, and C. Care and Henslow of Toms River. 1425. Authorize Mayor to enter into fair and open professional service contract for insurance broker consultants. Councilman Ambrosino. Thank you, Council President. This resolution authorizes the execution of a contract with Acrisure, also known as IMAC, for insurance broker slash consultant for the employees and retirees dental, vision, and temporary disability insurance, and Foundation Risk Partners, also known as Fairview Insurance Agency Associates, for insurance broker slash consultant for the employees and retirees medical, prescription, stop loss, and COBRA. 1426. Authorize Mayor to enter into fair and open professional service contract for the planning services pool. Vice President Zapsik. Thank you, Council President. This resolution approves a pool of professionals for planning services, including ARH Associates Hamilton, CME Associates Howell, Colliers Engineering and Design Red Bank, E2 Project Management Rockaway, H2M Associates Wall, Leon S. Avakian Incorporated Neptune, Remington and Vernick, Tom Zerber, and TNM Associates Middletown. Thank you. Thank you. 1427. Authorize Mayor to enter into fair and open professional service contract for code enforcement off, uh, prosecutor. Councilman Albanese. <clears throat> Thank you, Council President. This resolution authorizes the execution of contract with this distributes Campbell Straub. Hamilton, specifically Anthony Shibbets, Raymond C. Staub, Adam Lips, and David P. Scroth as code enforcer prosecutor. 1428. Authorize Mayor to enter into fair and open professional service contract for employee assistance program services. Councilwoman Crete. Thank you. This resolution authorizes the execution of a contract with Preferred Behavioral Health Lakewood to implement the Township's employee assistance program. 1429. Authorize appointments to the Board of Adjustment. Councilman Ambrosino. Thank you, Council President. This resolution authorizes appointments to the Board of Adjustment, including Eileen Delavol to a four-year term, Glenn Fuchs to a four-year term, Henry Guida to an unexpired term ending December 31st, 2024, and Jennifer Luddy to a two-year term. 1430. Authorize appointment of one commissioner to the Housing Authority. This resolution authorizes the appointment of Beth Oliver as a commissioner of the Brick Township Housing Authority for a five-year term effective March 15, 2023 and expiring March 14, 2028. 1431. Authorize appointments to Property Maintenance Board. Councilman Minichino. Thank you. This resolution authorizes the appointment of the following members of the Township's Property Maintenance Board. Edward Buecher, Stephen Brill, Ron Gaskill, James Hogan and Sandra Thomas, along with the alternates Joanne Bergen and Richard DeGenero. 1432. Authorize appointments to the Taurus Development Commission. Council Vice President Zapsik. Thank you, Council President. This resolution appoints the appoint, uh, authorizes the appointment of Matt Venuto and Johnny Mangiotis as members of the Tourism Development Commission for a two year term. Additionally, Council President DeYoung is appointed as the Township Council Representative for a one-year term. Thank you. 1433. Authorize appointments to the Ethics Information Committee. Councilwoman Crete. Thank you. This resolution authorizes the appointments to the Ethics Information Committee. Councilwoman Heather DeYoung, Council President. Uh, Councilman Vince Minichino, Councilwoman Andrea Zapsik, Susan Lidecker, Jack Russell, and Arlene Carroll. 1434. Authorize appointments to Sustainable Brick Township Committee. Councilman Ambrosino. Thank you, Council President. This resolution authorizes the appointments of the following members of the Sustainable Brick Township Committee. 
Mayor John G. Ducey or designee Jamie Lee Sisko, Council President, designee Perry Albanese, Keith Rella, Municipal Planner designee, Stephen Krakowski, Department of Public Works representative, Victoria Pakala, Board of Education representative, Stephen Speck, Brick Township Municipal Authority, uh, Utilities Authority representative, Sharon Urkuliani, Environmental Commission representative, Brian Mirsky, Chamber of Commerce representative, John Hyphantis, resident, Paul J. Kuntz, resident, Andrew Topinka, resident, Travis Crickman, resident, and John Henry, resident. 1435. Authorize appointments to the TNR committee. Councilwoman Ponterero. Thank you, Madam President. This resolution appoints the following members to the TNR committee. Uh, Councilman Perry Albany's, Doreen Gessling, and Joanne Lambrusa. All three have terms expiring December 31, 1436. Authorize appointment of Class Three Planning Board member. Councilman Ambrosino. Thank you, Council President. This resolution authorizes the appointment of Councilman Vince Minichino as a Class Three member of the Township Planning Board and the Architectural Review Committee for a one-year term. 1437. Recognize 2023 incoming <coughs> officers. A. Bretton Woods Fire Company, President Daniel Lyon, Vice President James Rocco, S Trustees Stephen Gerling, William Curtis, and Fred Pope Jr., Chief Thomas Bisbal, Assistant Chief Thomas Thiem Jr., Captain Edward Ramos Jr., First Lieutenant William Andrewkite, and Chief Engineer Jeffrey Szymanski. B, Herbertsville Fire Company. I was getting there. <laughs> <laughs> President Mark Christensen, Vice President Michael Pacella, Treasurer Chris Matsur, Secretary Bernard Hayes, Trustees Paul Matula, James Scott Sr., and Robert Salmon, Captain James Lapore, First Lieutenant Paul Matula, Second Lieutenants Thomas Weinmiller, and Robert Stauffer, and Safety Officer Mark Christensen. C. Laurelton Fire Company, Councilman Minichino. Thank you. Laurelton Fire Company is President John Crisolo, uh, Vice President Anthony Natali, Recording Secretary Steve Nowacki, Corresponding Secretary Michael Scott, Treasurer Joseph Polowski, Jr., Sergeant at Arms is Kyle Malinka, Trustee is Michael Cypress, John Hefferson, Senior Pat Patrick Stark Sharkey, <coughs> Robert Skillman, and Charlie Turner, Chief David Bergenberg, Bergenberg, <laughs> Associates, <laughs> Chief Paul Mazio, Captain James Hulser, Frank Bowser, and Joseph Zelinsky. <laughs> <laughs> We're laughing with you, no not at you. <laughs> <laughs> and 37D Pioneer Fire Company, Councilman Albanese. President Gary Abazir, Vice President Sean Crawford, Secretary Declan De Corso, Treasurer Francis Devaney, Chief Joseph Lincandro, Assistant Chief Vincent Piscatola, Captain William uh, Magnuson, Lieutenant Joseph Sanson, Engineer John Colster, Safety Officer Brian Big, Dive Captain Francis Devaney, and Assistant Dive Captain Michael Capper. 1438. Authorize Mayor to enter into fair and open professional service contract for Animal Control Officer Services. Councilman Albanese. Thank you, Council President. This resolution authorizes the appointment of A Academy of South Jersey Howell as animal control officer at an approved schedule of rates. This is a one-year contract. Thank you. This ends our consent agenda. Can I have a motion and a second? Motion. Second. Open to Council. Seeing none, close Council. Open to public for questions on the resolutions only. Anybody? Seeing none, close public roll call, please. Councilman Albanese. Yes. Councilwoman Ponterero. Yes. Councilman Ambrosino. Yes. Councilwoman Crate. Yes. Councilman Minichino. Yes. Vice President Zapsic. Yes. President DeYoung. Yes.
Moving on to bill resolution 1439. Be it resolved by the Township Council of the Township of Brick that the following bills be paid and that the Mayor and Clerk be and are hereby authorized to draw orders on the Treasurer for the amounts of the same. Manual bill resolution in the amount of $11,724,229.26. Very good. May I have a motion and a second? Motion. Second. second. Open to Council. Seeing none, close Council. Open to public on the manual bill resolution only. Seeing none, close public. Roll call, please. Councilman Albany. Yes. Councilwoman Pontarero. Yes. Councilman Ambrosino. Yes. Councilwoman Crate. Yes. Councilman Minichino. Yes. Vice President Zapsik. Yes. President DeYoung. Yes. Thank Moving you. on to 15 public comments. Please note that each person addressing the council during any section of the meeting during which public comment is permitted shall limit his or her remarks to five minutes pursuant to Brick Township Administrative Code Section 2-33B. Anybody like to speak? Mr. Sluka. Hi, John Sluka, 950 Sylvia Court. Uh, I'm going to read my letter, and maybe everybody gets it in the council. For some reason, I don't have one at email. It's not listed. But this is December 29th. So it says, Dear Mayor Ducey, Council President Vincent Minichino, all brick councilmen and councilwomen, and all brick residents and workers. <coughs> Let's all start out the new year by showing concern for the health and lives of workers and residents of Brick Township and Ocean County. During the holiday season, one may travel as I did on the roads in New Jersey. And one thing I noticed was many noise, safety, and pollution barriers that have been erected over the past few years in areas where there are houses within a quarter mile on the roadways, such as the New Jersey Turnpike. And yet others have been erected on vast or in vast areas of farmlands. Since nothing has been done to help the health and lives of the Ocean County residents and workers, these walls must be some sort of political payback scheme in to reward the construction companies that have funneled money into the political war chest of the governor and state senators. It can't be that the cows, sheep, horses, and other farm animals are more important than the seniors who develop COPD and die prematurely in brick, or children that develop asthma and autism here in Ocean County, or the workers and residents of brick who have increased lung and mouth cancers and other heart and lung diseases in Ocean County. Along with the animals, don't we all need the protection from the fumes and toxins from the truck and auto traffic traveling the roadways of the state? The New Jersey Turnpike Authority Commissioners who run the Garden State Parkway are appointed people who with high political payback standings and care more for their own wallets than they do for the people of Ocean County. Many people in Ocean County are dying because of the actions of the New Jersey Turnpike Authority Commissioners, but the seniors who survive are still hurting, but in the least case, it's only financial. Uh, I wrote the first, this first of the year letter with uh, two different ideas. Second one was, the township and a few other unions agreed to a four-year contract that contract incre has increased wages of 18 to 22 percent over f four years. Very nice for them, and the reason not that they are giving back or promise to do more, but the cost of living was up over the last two years. This was based on Social Security increase of 5.9 and 8.9 percent in the last two years. The average Social Security recipient made about $1,600, $1,666 per month, less than Medicare health insurance payment. Even if this was 15% reducing by the Medicare increase, that's still around $2,500. These seniors, and the seniors who are fixed income during the same period, received zero increases. So the cost of living increase did not keep up with the real quality of, while well, quality of living went down. Now, as we estimate the average worker in this bargaining unit, they only received 18 to 22 percent over four years, or 5 percent a year, which basically, on average, is around $5,000. And the residents, including seniors, through taxes, will pay for that increase. I'm hoping that the in this increase the unions have got, they remember this increase in the future when the Social Security recipients basically got about $2,500 over two years. Um, I did at the last meeting say it was easy to spend other people's money, 
but with government spending more and more, the other people are going broke. In conclusion, let me restate that the residents, young and old alike, pay the bills of the government spending, but when these same residents need a series of barriers to be built near the Garden State Parkway, the government and its bureaucracy laden commissioners and agencies uh, develop short arms and deep pockets. The people who work in, and reside in Evergreen Woods, Briar Mill, Primrose Garden, Greenbrier, Sawmill, Brick High, Town Hall here, Lanes Mill and other areas of Brick and Ocean County need your help. The brush and the trees that were destroyed foolishly on the Garden State Parkway need to be replenished to create some of the natural barriers from those vehicle uh, emissions on the Garden State Parkway. The residents of the areas and streets surrounding the Garden State Parkway are at risk to early onset of COPD, heart attacks, asthma, autism, premature deaths and other ailments so they need the noise pollution and safety barriers. This would be money well spent because time is not on our side. Thanks for your time. I yield back 18 seconds. Thank you. Anybody else from public? Yes, Ms. Call. Nan Call, 18 Greenbrier Boulevard. At first, I want to say to the entire town, Happy New Year. Let's hope it's a happy new year. It wasn't a good year for three years. I call it the dark ages of this century. Um, I have a lot of paper here, as you see. It happens that I've always practiced just-in-time management technique. And I went on the website to get the agenda, which wasn't available to me, I don't believe, before, because when I looked for it, over the weekend, it wasn't going to be available until today, despite that it's supposed to be more time than that. And I once again see that you have a consent agenda that lumps in matters that are not supposed to be in a consent. You're not supposed to have discussed them outside of the hearing of the people of the bri of Brick whom you supposedly represent, but you never listen to anything we have to say. Take John Sluka. He's been saying these things since 2006, if I remember correctly. There's also the matter of the changes that were made to the interchange, making it full entrance exit, north and southbound. It has been done in a shameful manner. I've known enough about township traffic laws and traffic laws in general. Hard lefts and hard rights are not, not the best solution when you're going 40 and 50 miles an hour. And yet, the people of this council, and you, whether you were in office or not, you were a member of the people, and you, since you came in, you didn't do any different. The um, discussion that we had on it was minimal. We get the story that, oh, that's the county affair. That's a state affair. That's not our affair. Well, it's all your affair because you represent our needs, our wants. And you do not ever follow through. This is tonight's Brick Township Council, full agenda, printed out. I have talked many times about Loretta Weinberg, called the conscience of the Senate, now retired but still very visible in the media. One of you people, not you, Perry, one of the others that avow an allegiance to the Democratic Party rather than to the people of Brick. She is from Teaneck. This is their agenda for basically the same things. But things are spelled out in it. As she has said, and I have quoted her many times, that the people have a right to know everything that went into how you made your decision. There should be no closed meetings. 
it should be done in front of the people and not discussed unless you are at a meeting that is open to the meeting op to the people open meetings act which she authored and has amended um, it's a disgrace to see and mr. mayor patting yourself on the back number one I think the worst thing you did was remove the red light cameras did it without us having anything to say the red light cameras as they were I don't know I know from the beginning that a fee was paid to a company and that then they were paid for what they processed I don't know if when that time ended could we have either kept the cameras or bought the cameras from them but every day I see terrible accidents and while I'm at it I'll throw out I heard that there was an awful situation where a young man was pulled over and told to turn on to Division Street and issued a ticket for riding the white line where there's hardly enough space to pass a car and he was subjected to a terrible sight thank you miss call oh really thank you for not paying any attention to any of the people of brick for the mayor not holding an open town hall thank meeting you, Paul. oh excuse me thank yes. you please sit yes. down yes i defer to your better sense thank now. you anybody else from the public mr finelli I'm going to continue on with what John had to bring up. At the last meeting, when I asked about the size of the raises, uh, the answer was people were losing ground, and the 8.7% that was given last year, this year, to Social Security was mentioned. So people are losing ground, and I'm wondering where that is. So, I, like the mayor, I went back to 2013. I'm going to give you the numbers for Social Security cost of living increases. Keep in mind, again, that those raises were given out to people making less than $30,000 from Social Security, not people making two, three, or four times that amount. 2013, it was 1.7, 14, 1.5, 15, 1.7, 16, a goose egg, zero, 17.3, 18, 2.0, 19, 2.8, 21.6, .6, and 21, 1.3. If you average them out, and I know averaging averages isn't a pure science, but this is close enough, that comes out to 1.4. Add in 2022, which the people were still getting their three, three and a half percent pay raises, they add in that 5.9, that comes out to 1.8. And if you add in this year, which was 8.7, again, your people were still getting their annual pay raises. That brings the average up to 2.4. Nowhere up until 2021 was it ever over 3%. So everybody's pay raises were staying well ahead of cost of living. So my question is, where were these people losing ground? And how are you going to pay for this? Anybody can feel free to answer. She deferred it to me, Mr. Finelli. How are you? Um, so, as I explained last time, we, the council was addressing the cost of living over the past two years, which was below their salary increases. And there are plans in place that have been in place for some time to address our fiscal uh, crisis. Um, everything is going up, and we have spent a, quite a bit of time in the past year, more than a year, in looking at ways that we could cut to prepare for what was coming. So we have done other things, and the unions were also amenable to some changes in their contract that saved us money which was not brought up at the last meeting. But, so things, that, things in the contract can save, like mm -hmm. giving up the medical insurance stipend. If you don't take medical insurance, was there anything else in there? Sure. We capped out-of-network chiropractic health costs, which was our single biggest out-of-network expenditure in our health care plan. We've worked diligently to reduce uh, expenses in our health insurance, going up 13% compared to the state that's going up 26 We've done a lot to save money, and we'll continue to do a lot to save money. But the council has opted to make sure our employees are are taken care of and they're supported and we're doing a lot 
recognizing that expense is going to hit our budget. What we hear every year when it comes budget time is the mayor saying we have to increase taxes because salaries which make up 85% of the budget went up. This was a humongous raise, and you gave out raises of what John said, 18%, 22%, 18%, and 22% over four years, well above the average cost of living increase, well above. Now, I understand you're not an elected uh, Official. representative. You want to keep your people happy. They are elected representatives. They're here to do a lot of things, and one of those things is to represent the taxpayers who elected them. Right? Do you really think that's what you did by approving these large, large raises? You really think that? If you don't, you really need to rethink it. Right? Because all of the things that John said are true. Right? Everything goes up, but when everything goes up, and then we get a double-edged sword, boom, we're going to get hit again. You know, a, 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 an 8.7 percent raise on a $30,000 um, Social Security is nowhere near the raises that you get on a $100,000 salary, but the cost of living is the same for you and me in a lot of areas. If you talk about gas, we both have to pay the same thing. The senior citizens have to pay the same thing. If you talk about food, same thing. The prices aren't any different. Mr. Finelli, we have a lot more employees making $30,000 than we do $100,000. So uh, think about that. You think about, uh, to take a close look at the biggest part of your budget, which is the law enforcement, and look at the salaries that are in that group of people, and, and, and then compare that, all right? Thank you, Mr. Finelli. Anybody else from public? Seeing none, close public. Mrs. Bergen. I have nothing to say. Everything that's been said tonight is wonderful, and congratulations on a new year for everyone. And do the best we can, as we always do, to be fiscally responsible and take care of our workforce. So, Happy New Year, everybody. Thank you. Mayor, do you have anything else to say? I said a lot before, but congratulations to <laughs> new council president, new council vice president, and Happy New Year, everybody. Thank you, Mayor. Mr. Keneally. Congratulations and Happy New Year. Thank you. Madam Clerk. Yes, congratulations on your appointment, um, Council President Thank Young you. and Council Vice President Sapsic. Thank you. And Happy New Year. Jillian, thank you for filling in. <laughs> you have anything to say? Thank you. Councilman Albanese. Heather and Andrea, congratulations. Uh, I'm sure you guys will both do a great job and keep this team strong. Thank you. Councilwoman Pontarero. Oh, my heartfelt congratulations to Heather G. Young, President Heather G. Young, and Vice President Andrea Zapsik and a wonderful and blessed new year for everyone. The only issue I want to address with Mr. Finelli is I agree with you that all of the costs for those on fixed income have gone up, yes. But the solution is not to deny increases to people who are working hard, fulfilling obligations, and that is merited. The answer is to increase the fixed income, social security, and disability that a good percentage of our population are living on. It's that end of it that has to be fixed not denying our workers what they need. Thank you. <clears throat> Councilman Ambrosino. I'd also like to congratulate Council President DeYoung and Council Vice President Andrea Zapsik. Uh, I'd also like to put on the record that my email address is councilmanambrosino at gmail.com. I've asked our Council Secretary to ensure that that's listed on the website. I'd like to wish everybody watching, everybody here in attendance, and everybody in town, Happy New Year and best of luck in 2023. Councilwoman Creed. Thank you. Uh, congratulations to our new president and vice president, well-deserved, and I look forward to working with everyone here 
as we head into 2023 to continue the success that we've had um, over the last 10 years. So thank you and happy new year. Councilman Minichino. Thank you. Yeah, my congratulations to the both of you. I'm sure we're gonna have a good year and happy new year to everybody. Vice President Zapsack. Thank you, Council President. Um, I wanna thank Councilwoman Crate for her kind words. Thank you, Mayor Ducey, for your kind words also. Thank you to my council colleagues for your vote of confidence. Um, and um, congratulations, Councilman Halloran. Great to see you back here with us tonight. Enjoy your retirement. Don't go running around opening any doors in town hall. <laughs> <laughs> so, happy New Year, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, first, I'd like to um, thank Councilman Ambrosino for your kind words. Thank you so much, sir. And um, I'd also like to thank my brother and sister-in-law, along with my three-month-old niece, for trekking out here. And uh, I'd also like to thank my niece, Luna Main, for waiting to cry her head off when she went outside. And to my fellow council members, uh, thank you so much for entrusting me with this position. Um, I appreciate it. I, I always say this is one of my favorite, this is my favorite job that I have. And um, I know that I will do my best to address any issues or answer any questions that you all have, and my door is always open. With that, Happy New Year. And our next meeting is January 24th at 7 p.m. Can I have a motion to adjourn? Motion. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Adjourned.